Hey guys, it's Baban and I'm back with another tutorial and today we're going to be having a look at how to do some emotes. Now I am going to be going and covering the technical aspects of these as I go through but when it comes to style choice and colouring it's going to be a bit more subjective but what I'll be doing is explaining why I'm making the choices that I do with my emotes as I go through the process. I'm going to be using Clip Studio Paint to do mine but if you guys are using a different program then what you can do is just probably go and google the term that I'm using to describe the process that I'm doing along with whatever you are using and you should be able to find some way of doing it. If you don't have any of those quicker ways of doing things then it is all completely doable manually just with a pen tool. Before we start as well, I want to mention that there is some things in Clip Studio Paint specifically that I will be using to explain the technical aspects of this and that includes the fill tool, the selection tool and the transparency lock. Now I'll be talking about them as I go through but if you guys aren't that familiar with how they work, I've got another tutorial that just goes over specifically those and the exact techniques that I'm going to be using to make these emotes so I'll put a link to that video now if you guys want to go and watch that first I will also put a link to it at the end. Okay so let's get a quick preview the first thing we're going to look at is the basic sizes of twitch emotes that you're going to need then I'm going to explain what sort of sizes I use and why that helps me. Next I'm going to go over how I set up my little grid and then why exactly I use it and how I'm going to be using it later with these emotes. After that we're going to look at a few more little tips that I use for my grid setup and then we're going to see how I go and use the space in them effectively. I'll also be showing you a little tool that I use just to preview what emotes are going to look like while I'm setting them out and also when they're finished. Then we will carry on and have a look at me doing some lines where I clean up those sketches that I had. Then we'll start to get into where we're setting up the base for them. So we're going to go and figure out how to put in our bottom layer like this so we've got a flat background to put our colours on and then I'm going to go and explain another little trick that I use with the outlines. Then I'm going to show you guys the finished coloured versions of them and what we're going to do is use the eyedropper just to look at what colours I've used and why I've used them and we're going to sort of backwards engineer from those and recreate them. Then right at the end we're going to look at how I go and render them down and resize them and then lastly we'll see them all put into the little preview thing that I mentioned to have a look at how they look. So let's get started, here we go. Okay so I'm kind of at a midpoint with these emotes now so I want to show you guys just what my setup looks like before we get started on doing anything. So there's not too many layers on the go at the moment, we can see that I've got my refs up here and then I've got sketches underneath like this and clean ones as well that are sitting over those and underneath I've got this little grid of squares now that's something I want to go and explain first so the first thing we need to look at is what kind of sizes we have when we use emotes now for twitch when they get squashed down into the sizes where they are usable they're going to be 122 pixels by 122 pixels in a square the next one down is going to be 56 by 56 and the smallest one is 28 by 28 so those are kind of very small you can see where I've noted these on these are the actual sizes and they're kind of grainy and pixely now this is zoomed in like very very far about 800% zoom so that we can see it like this and if I zoom it out to 100% zoom this is the actual size that they're going to be. So they're going to be very, very small, especially this teeny tiny littlest one that's just 28 by 28. So by looking at that, we know we're going to need everything to be quite clear and contrasting so that we can see any sort of reactions or expressions on the faces. We want to be able to see any text inside of that. Um, so we want to be making the best use of that space that we possibly can. So at this point you might think, oh right, okay, I've got those sizes, let's, let's make a canvas in the biggest size and start drawing on that. But if I start doing some lines on this, you can see it's kind of like gritty and grainy and that's not going to be the most pleasant thing to draw on, really, is it? <laughs> it's not going to be super comfy. Everyone I've heard that has said, oh, I started doing them on this kind of size of canvas, has said that it's really really very uncomfortable to do and they just don't end up looking as nice um but because we're doing digital we can always resize stuff so if i go back to my sheet here and i zoom in 
onto one of them. Let's zoom into 100%. This is the size mine is when it's 100%. So if I start zooming in, it's going to get a little bit crispy, but you can see it's not as bad as those other ones was. It only starts to get to that level when I zoom in to about the same level of zoom. But if I have it on 100% zoom, this is the actual size of it. So you can see when I start drawing my lines, they're nice and smooth. It's kind of the same as if I'm drawing anything else. It's just a little bit smaller. For me, this fill this fills up my screen. These are kind of the parameters of my screen. So this is a good, probably like getting on for 20 centimeters of my screen that I have room to draw on. So it's I'm not doing anything really tiny like this or picking at pixels and trying to draw something with really tiny little movements like that. Let me go back to this one and just compare this again to the 100% zoom on this version. So what I want to do is instead make a canvas that's a little bit bigger, which I've already gone and done. So I've gone and made a new canvas and this one is now on 100% zoom. So if I swap between this one and that one and this one again and that one, you can see that those are the same size. Now what I like to work to with these, the size that these are is 800 by 800. And what I've done, you can see I've got two layers, I've got the base and this one over the top that's just a white layer. So what I've done there, if I go and empty that, is just to fill it in with entirely one colour. And because we've made a new canvas that's 800 by 800, if I go and copy that layer, and if I bring it into this folder, and I'll make a new folder for this tutorial, if I paste what I've just copied, then that's gonna give me a little block in there that is the size I wanna work to. Now, you guys don't have to do it like this, but what I like to do, instead of going copy, paste, move like that, is to copy, paste, and then move straight to the side with just the left and right and up and down buttons. I feel like it works a whole lot better because it's gonna keep it on the same level if you're only pressing the one button. And then I will merge those two down and then copy paste again, and then make myself another duplicate of it. And then we've got four, and you can just keep kind of doubling them up like that. If you prefer to move them kind of freely just with, the, with your pen or with your mouse, then that, that'll work too, but it might look a little bit uneven in some places. So I prefer to spend the time doing this personally because it looks a little bit better when you have them lined up nicely, especially if you want to present them in a sheet later. Okay, so I'm going to merge those down as well now that they're moved into place. And then what I can do is just make them a little bit less harsh by reducing the opacity if I want to. They don't need to be straight white all the time. It's a little bit bright on my eyes. And they're on their own layer. And now the reason that I want to give for this as well is that when you're using these, it's going to give you the right size to draw on, but it's also going to give you this area just of the square that you can select and then crop and save your image from once your emotes are finished, which is why I like to do them in these big sheets. Um, it also lets me kind of reference all the other ones that are there rather than doing it on just one file that's about this size and then having them all on top of each other. It gives me a bit more reference between each of them. So what I can do with this, say I've gone over the top with another layer and I'm starting to do all my sketches and my drawing. Let's draw someone in here like this and have a bit of text maybe like, hi, <laughs> hi. Maybe he's got some like little Legos going that way or something, L little legs that are maybe just escaping out a little bit. And I'm just trying to draw those in to understand where everything else that I'm drawing is going to help me while I'm doing it. What I can do to fix this, instead of forcing myself to draw within these lines is to go onto this layer where I've got my squares and I'm using Clip Studio Paint. So if I right click and then do selection from layer, create selection, there should be a way to do this quite easily in whatever program you guys are using as well, maybe in a selection menu at the top or if you right click on the layer as well, then it'll give me 
just this edge of selection only around these squares if you guys can see it in the black and white there and then what I want to do since I've got these both in a folder is go onto my folder and then I'll right click again layer mask and mask outside the selection and then that's just going to help me as I'm drawing to see where the edges of those emotes are and on Clip Studio as well I can also right click and just disable the mask or enable it again and turn it on and off just to check that it's looking good so that I don't have to feel too nervous about staying within those edges. Like I mentioned before, the other reason that I like to keep these is so that I can go and crop them down and save them. So what I can do is go back onto this layer here, whether I've got my mask on or not, and again, there will be ways for you guys to do layer masks in other programs, but you're going to have to look that up on your own. Just try Googling the kind of terms that I'm using to describe any processes that I'm doing. Now, if I go onto this layer with my squares, and if I get my selection wand, I've got the area scaling off, and I've got it set to just this layer. And I'm going to hit the selection on that, and it's going to grab just this box for me so it's as easy as going and selecting the box like that and then I've got my layer over the top say that's my finished emote <laughs> what I can do is go on that and hit the copy button command C copy it and then I can paste it in here just to show you guys see how it's cropped those edges out see how it's cropped those edges out that would be there otherwise might be a better example if I show you it without that mask on if I take them if I take the mask off and then copy them again and if I paste him into here you can see that it's cropped those edges out that I don't want that are leaking over the edge of those spaces what I can also do once I've got this selected is go and crop it down like this and if you guys remember the size of the one that I made for this is 800 by 800 and you can see at the top now that I've cropped that down I've got my 800 by 800 size again so I'm keeping that size that I've got by keeping these and I'm using them as a little reference for where I'm selecting later so you want to make sure that you keep these little squares in the back. Don't delete them because you're going to need those when you want to go and save your emotes and crop them out of the sheet. Okay, so if we zoom out of that and just hide that for now, I'm going to deselect where I've selected it and I'm going to bring all of the layers that I've already done back on and let's go and have a look at my sketchums. Now the first thing I do is just kind of go over them like this um, you can see there are bits at the edges where I've kind of gone outside of those edges. You can see here as well in my layers menu that I've got one of those layer masks as well. And I can turn it on if I want and then it'll put those back in. I can disable it again. It'll bring them out or I can turn it back on again. And I've still got all my layers of just these squares underneath ready to use as reference later and also so I can keep these the right size. So it's it's kind of like having a canvas inside a canvas that you can easily crop out later just by selecting it. Okay so now let's talk about where to draw things <laughs> in our emotes. Now like I said because they are super duper tiny and they're going to get shrunk down very very small. What I like to do occasionally while I'm drawing things in is to zoom out and see if I can tell just from the drawings what is going on in them. It's going to get a little bit clearer later but what you want to do really is kind of fill up as much space as you can with these. So that's kind of something you're going to have to learn how to do if you don't find that very easy. But like I say it might be a little bit easier just with having these masks on over the top and being able to draw like extra little bits down here that you can crop out later if you don't really want them you can go and select things and resize it so that they fit in a little bit better let me go and have a look 
at one of these that I was having a bit of an issue with that might not be fitting in as good as it could. So I'm going to go around this one, get my lasso selection tool back. I don't want the shrink one. I'm going to go around that and I'm going to see if I can kind of resize it and maybe fit it in a little bit better. I'm thinking of cutting a bit of that bottom out bringing it maybe up some more, squeezing that into the side so that I've got a bit more room for that text there. And we've also got a larger area that's being taken up by the face and the expression so that it reads a little bit better once it's kind of <laughs> really, really small. If we undo it and compare it, you can see how that's a little bit better than it was before. It's taking up a little bit more space on that emote, filling it with more information in more of the space but you pretty much you kind of want to keep it to as, as little text as you can I've got this one over here that's wrong layer and I think that one reads okay because I've tried to take up a little bit more space with those words and you can just about read layer on that when it's shrunk down very small but I will be making a, a little bit more contrasty a bit later in the process and I'm just going to go and clean it up like this. At this stage, I'm not doing my line art. I'm just trying to make sure that it is clean before I do my line art. And don't feel like you need to rush through to doing the lines. Okay, so here we are with those cleaned up sketches. And what I've gone and done is just put a white background behind them so that they are solid and we've got that transparency behind them. And what I'm going to do to show you guys something is go and render a few of them so that we've got them as separate little kind of emotes as examples at the current stage so that we can go and test them for the different sizes. And I hear you saying, Baban, where are you going to test them? Well, let me show you this little website that somebody told me about while I was streaming, I think. I can't remember who it was, but good, good job finding the thing. And what it does is it lets you go and plunk your emotes on there once you've finished them or at any point you kind of want to render them, I thought it'd be better to show you guys them a little bit earlier and it'll give you a preview of them at the side. Um, there's also options to zoom in and out like that. You can see it on both um, kind of backgrounds, light and dark. It lets you upload the different sizes as well if you want to render them all in the different sizes. I'm just rendering them at the full size at the moment and using the zoom to see how they look, but you can go and do it. You can see there's options um, on the little drag and drop areas to go and put them in different sizes. I'll put the link to it on the screen right now and I'll also put it down in the description. I do want to just say as well, I'm, I'm not sponsored by these guys. It's just a very useful little app that will help you with seeing if they're reading well at different sizes. Okay, so now you've checked any of those out like you want to, then the next thing I go and do is my lines over the top. I just reduce these sketches that I've done and turn that off. You can see how I've got all my lines and they're looking kind of skinny at the moment, but that's the first step that I go and do. Now you guys can do it a little bit chunky at first if you'd like to, but it's something that I like to go and add in later is a little bit more definition to them. I like to just get them in the right place first and then worry about line weight. But if you guys want to do that all at the same time, that's fine. I've left this one down here that we're going to go and do now. What I usually do as well is put all of my background on later. So I'm going to turn that off for now. Let's zoom in on this one and I'm going to do my lines on the same layers. I'm just going to speed this one up too while I do it, but you can see I'm just going to do it with quite a chunky brush so that I've got some nice bit big contrasty lines on it. I'm also going to go and fill that text in a little bit thicker than it is at the moment and I'm just doing it solidly on the line layer right now, the text, and what I'll do later is go and change the colour of the lines so that it goes whatever kind of colour I want. I'm not going to keep it as solid black like this. With the other ones that I've done so far as well, I've got quite a lot of thick line weight on them, so I'm trying to blend that all in onto this one as well. Okay, so if we zoom out again, we can see that that is on that layer now. I've put any extra little bits that I want onto it in terms of the line weight. And the next thing I want to do is go and put the background on like I have with all of these. So the way that I do that is to, let's get rid of this sketch underneath and also anything extra that's hanging around I've got my little notes there what I want to do is get my selection tool and again I've got a tutorial on how I do this on my channel which I will put a link to at the end I'm going to put the area scale in to about one 
but if you guys look for how to do this in your own program you should be able to find out what I like to do is set it to select around all of the layers and then I'll go and select around where this is here the edges of the boxes and you can see again it's just giving me the edges of those boxes and then I will come and select onto the inside where I want it to be transparent so then it's giving me the selection of just this area if you guys can see the edge around it there it's around the edge of everything and then I invert it and then if I go onto my layer here then it should let me go and fill that in and it just saves me a minute of going in and kind of trying to color everything manually and if I turn that off see it's just all of that behind there let's fill this bit in up there as well actually I'll be using that a bit later and if I deselect then there we go we've got that set up let me zoom out again and the next thing I like to go and do is to put a bit of an edge around my emotes like this and you can see how that just makes them pop out a little bit more it gives them a bit more contrast of the silhouette against the edge now I'm doing these with a black edge around them I'm gonna set it up just as black for now and the way I do this in clip studio is to I'll usually do it where I'll have the whole sheet of just those um, white backgrounds done so I'm gonna select around that just on this white layer and I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna paste it underneath so I've got that and then on clip studio you should have something called a layer property like this and there's effects here and what you can do is if I click on this one and I get black and I fill it in you can see how that gives me an edge around everything that I've put down like that now you can go and do it manually I don't think there's settings for this in anything else it's it's like specifically a clip studio thing but that's the way I'm gonna be doing it you'd like I say you can go and do it manually it might just take a little bit longer or you can do it with a selection tool by um, setting your area scale into minus. So I'm gonna leave it like that. And let's zoom in. And what I'm gonna do now is, with this base that it's attached to, is change the color of that underneath instead of what we've got at the moment, where it's all black on the rest of these. I want it to be the same on this one. So let's go and make that all black as well like that so that it fits in with the rest because it was just white before and it was giving me a little bit of a crinkly edge and the nice thing with this if you keep it on its own layer like that I'm just gonna merge it down with the rest of the set that I've got on this other layer underneath as well so that they all sit together is if you lock the layer then I, I can change this to white if I want I can change it to white so if you guys have got a dark emote that you need a white edge to for a bit more contrast you can just go around them like this and change it later. I'm just setting it down as black so that it shows on the way mine are at the moment. Another little tip that's quite useful once you get to this stage with these is you can see I've got a sort of grey background right now just so it's neutral but what you can do as well is have one that you can put over to just interchange and see what they're gonna look like against different backgrounds. If you remove your little square layer with the grid then I can just swap between these quite happily and I just keep those right underneath everything else. Okay so now we're to the point where we've got our lines, we've got our outline for them so that they stand out and when you want to start getting into the colouring now this gets a little bit more tricky because it's a bit more your choice towards stylization and how you want to do it but I'm going to explain why I make the choices that I make and what I found works quite well for the ones that I've made. So the first thing I want to do is show you guys how I've gone and finished these on my stream. There we go. Got all of these coloured and finished with all the details and that probably looks quite intimidating to go from, you know, blank to something like coloured and finished. <laughs> but we're going to go through how I've gone and finished these, why I'm making the choices with the colours that I am. And if you guys want to do it in the same way, go for it. But you want to go and find a different way to do it that is chill too so if I bring out the color wheel like this and I start going around and I drop in some colors then you can see that if I go onto the bits that are highlights or just the midtones like around here on the hair and the face 
and here you can see that these are all very very pastel colors but if we go and eye drop these ones that are shadows like this in the skin tone they're still quite pastel but they've got a lot more saturation in them and that is kicking up the color of the ones next to them so none of these are really very very dark because most people are going to be using a dark background so I don't want everything to blend into that dark background, but I do want it to have enough contrast and enough colour to be seen. Like I mentioned before as well, let's scroll down, let's get rid of our squares and let's try them against the dark background. So for example, like round here, I don't want the head to get like too dark because it's just going to blend in. So it's still got like a little bit of colour in there. This is also why, like around here, where I've got it quite dark, it's maybe a better idea to have that white edge around there if you've got dark colours like that. So for example, if I come down to where I've got my white lines, if I remove those, then it all kind of starts to blend in a little bit around here, especially if you had a darker colour or one that was a little bit more neutral towards grey, it might start blending in a bit much. So that's why I've made the choice to have those on as well, because that's just going to help to define the edges a little bit more since we've got quite a lot of this dark brown. If we pull over this side as well, what I've done is I tried to keep the text quite light. I've give it a little bit of shine so it's got a slightly more saturated colour in there. But again, if I go and eye drop that, you can see it pops up right along the top here. And that one, just a little bit darker and more saturated so that it pops the colour a bit more. Now, what I'm gonna do is if I just move my colour wheel out of the way, so what I'm going to start doing with these is we're going to leave that underneath and we're going to bring up just my copy of all these layers on the top where we've still got them just in white. I'm going to zoom out and what I usually do is instead of starting with a white base, I start with something a little bit closer to grey. I lock my layer transparency and I fill it in like this. And that just stops any little bits of white getting in the way that might have been left behind there it should all blend in with the color of the lines that we've got now so what i can do now is just turn this on and off and we can see and compare what's underneath so if i go and start grabbing colors for example the first thing that's going to take up a lot of the space is going to be this skin color which is quite pale so what i do is start going and filling big areas in with it like this just to put it down and like I said you should be able to see already that it is very very pale there really isn't a lot of color in it and what we're gonna do is go and pick a few to go and do through to completion instead of going and redoing the whole set so let's do this one of the dragon let's do this one and this one since we've already worked on those on the tutorial and let's pick let's do the Bob Ross one so that we've got one that's a little bit more on the cutesy side as well. Okay, so if we zoom in on the dragon first, and I get rid of this one, and we have a look at the finished one underneath, let's have another quick look at the colours. So we've already looked at the base ones that are very, very light and pastel. You can see that one is like right up on the top there and quite pink. And if I go and select some of the other lighter colours, you can see these, they all kind of hang around the top there, and they're not that saturated. They're more towards pastel, Go into his ears as well and onto his eyes and the green as well they're all very light and pastel but if we go into the shadows then for most of them they get a little bit more towards the saturated side over here and you might be able to notice as well something different between these as i flip between them that isn't just the shading if I go and eye drop some of the lines, for some of it, I've got quite a dark pink purple, like this, it's just kind of bordering slightly on red because I want them to be a little bit warmer. But if I go and grab his eyebrows, for example, that's a bit of a brighter colour. It's still quite saturated, but it's in the same kind of colour group. It's a little bit more pink towards the kind of colour that we've got him. But that is something that we're going to look at later as well is changing the line colours. So what I'm going to do is grab some more of these lighter colours that he needs on him. So I've got these parts here that I was putting on 
when I was starting. So what I did first was put down this quite light base that's going to be my mid-tone. And then I figured out what other little markings he needs on him that are just going to be my base colours. So he wants those bits to be that kind of white there. I also want it on the inside of his ears like that. He has a stripe of it down his tummy as well. Bring my other colours back up. Also got white and this light green for his eyes. So what we're starting to do is just build it up with these nice pastel -y colours. We're not worrying too much about the shading yet. We just want to get all of our colours down in the placement that they need to be and with colours that we like. So, there, we can start to see how he's coming together now. He doesn't have any shading on him, but he's got those base colours that are the same as the finished one. So, what am I thinking when I'm going and picking my shading colours? Because, like I said, these are very pastel, but when we went and selected these, they were a lot more saturated and further over to this side. And the idea for that is, because I want him to look more red, if I make it pastel, he's going to get very, very pink. So, to compensate for that and bring in a little bit more colour and saturation, I want to start bringing in a more saturated colour like this to light him up. And give us that contrast in the values as well as in the saturation of the colours. I'm going to make him all shadowy around his wings for now. Like that. Get it pulled around this way like that. And you can do this on a different layer if you want. If you want to do it kind of cell shaded like me with emotes, I like to, instead of going and doing it the usual way that I will with different layer modes, I prefer to go and do it where I pick the colours individually because there's generally not that many colours that I'm going to be using anyway in, in a single emote because we don't want it to get too busy. So I find it easy to, or a, well a little bit easier to just go and do it by selecting the colours individually and giving myself a little bit more control over them. I'm going to make those bits darker on his ears further towards the back as well. Bring that one Put a little bit more light onto it. Okay, so we can see in comparison there, he's starting to get a little bit more colour in him. He's not quite the same as this other one yet because, as you can see now, a little bit clearer. If you look at his eyebrows and around the side of his head and this bit on his ear, with the lines, they're still black, so that's that's kind of bringing the colour down a little bit, but we're not going to look at that just yet. I'm going to grab a few more of my different colours and start bringing them into the shading. So his ear there can be a little bit in shade. We can put a little bit of shading around there and around his eyes and a little bit on his tummy there where he doesn't need a whole lot of light hitting him. Let's also go and pick some colours to go and put onto his eyes and this is the process that I'll do when I'm doing this and this is all all on a single layer there all of my colours it's like I say I, I find it a little bit easier to do it like this but you can separate it if you want get a little bit of shadow on his eyes there with the green and a slightly pink tinged shadow for on them as well so that it works with the rest of the colours that we've got. Straighten it out a little bit like so. If we flip between them again you can see you can see the colours are the same there but it doesn't it doesn't look quite the same does it? If I zoom out on it and I swap between them you can see how it's ever so slightly softer with the other one. It's still retaining that contrast that we've got but it's not quite there with the colours so something that I like to do this in a lot of things actually 
um, I find that when you remove the line art from something, it gives you a truer idea of the colours, because black can tend to dull it down a little bit. So, what I like to do to compensate for that is, like I mentioned earlier, with using the transparency lock up here, I will press that, and then, on this example of the one we've already finished, you can see I've got a colour that is kind of in between the light and the dark one, in terms of where it is in the colours here, and it's just, it's quite dark, it's not as dark as the black, but it's got a little bit more of that colour that is already in the rest of this emote. So, I'll usually leave it darker around things like eyes, so that they've got a lot more contrast in them, but for little things like eyebrows, like this, you can see as I start to go and put that on, how it calms all of that black down a little bit, and it just helps all of those colours work together so much nicer. This over here, so we don't have a big block of black up there. And I, I kind of like to do it in the same way that I do stickers, which is where I will try and keep the outline around the outside where it's thicker. I will try and keep that as the dark colour because, like I say, we want the contrast between the background. But anything inside of that that is defining, I guess, his skin, where it's red, I will go and make that this darker red colour. And we'll be doing the same when I move on to the other ones with skin tone. And bringing in a little bit of a warmer colour just to boost it up a bit. And bring in a little bit more colour. So, if we swap between those now, they're pretty much the same. I missed out doing the little bits of white on his wings, and he doesn't have the highlights on his eyes yet on this one. But those are near enough the same now. As I've done this one as well, I'm starting to think that maybe around his mouth it's not quite contrasty enough, so I'm going to grab that colour again and bring it down a little bit. And I'm going to try one that's slightly darker, so we get a bit more contrast there. And now I'm happy with that. And then the final thing I'd do for those little details on his eyes would be to go and make a new layer over the top and just overpaint with any little highlights that I want on like that to make him nice and sparkly. So he's not exactly as clean as the other one. But that should show my, show you guys my process for that. Okay, so we've done it. Let's go and swap to another one to look at. Let's have a look at the Bob Ross one. Okay, so I've got my basic flat colours for this one down as well. And let's go and turn this one off and have a look at the underneath with the shading on like this. And you should be able to notice now that I've pointed it out with the last one that... On certain bits of this, like here, if I start eye dropping it, we've got a little bit more of a fleshy tone instead of just the black lines like I've got around the outside. This is also why a lot of the time I will tend to do thick line art like this on emotes or kind of shadows under things like around the neck here. Because when I go and do that, if I'm going to make my line art that kind of colour, it's going to be a bit more of a sort of fleshy tone in that shadow as opposed to a big dark one. Um, you can see I think I've slightly changed the colour on the hair as well, maybe? And I didn't do it on the shirt on this one, but on the rest of these you can see I've left the pupils just as solid colours like that with the lines. So what I've gone and done on those is just drawn those in in the same way that I've done all of the rest of the different line colours except just with a little bit more detail by doing like the big blob and then the, the different little bit of green under there. Something else that I want to point out, if I just start by going and grabbing the skin tone with this, like I said with the other one as well, 
because this colour that I've got at first for the base is quite light, with this next one I've made it a little bit darker and also a bit more saturated so that it brings out a bit more of that skin tone. And as I start to go and put this on, it will start to look a lot less pale and pasty and washed out and it'll bring a lot more colour into it. But what I wanted to mention was that when I am doing the shading on these, I'm not trying to put too much onto it, I'm trying to creep the majority of it to this lighting and then just shade it enough to give you enough of a shape to be able to understand. It's going to help to show the expression in some places, especially when I go and put it under the eyebrows like this. It's going to give me this big shape around here to show off where that expression is going to be. So I'm going to fill that in around there. We're going to have a little bit of shading on the hand by there because we're having the light coming from over this side. So I, I am shading this in the way that I'd normally shade something when I'm doing cell shading. But what I'm trying to avoid is doing anything like very extreme lighting. So if I had the light source like way, way over this way and most of the face was in shadow and it was maybe like just around the edge of the nose and like around the side of the mouth that was lit up. I'm trying to avoid doing any kind of shading like that because that's going to make it harder to see what is going on when it's shrunk down tiny because it's going to make it a lot darker and gives a lot less area of contrast and if I zoom out a bunch on that you can see how it just it just darkens it like way too much it also kind of takes away from the way that those colors play with each other and sort of even out between them to be understandable as a skin tone so that's something I'm actively trying to avoid and you can tell in comparison with the other one which one's gonna read better with which kind of shading so let's put it back on and let's undo that that I just did there and then let's go and do the same with the hair as well go and shade that I am trying to get a little bit of shadow under the hair like this as well just to give it some depth and I'm going to pull the rest of it around on this side in that shading. Whoop, whoop, whoop. We're going to get a little bit of shape under there, a little bit, of, a little bit of floof, a little bit of texture in there. I don't like to go too heavy with the texture because if I, if I start doing like individual strands like this, if I start trying to draw them all out like that, it's going to look nice at this kind of size. But when I start zooming out, you can see how it begins to just all merge together into a darker colour. And that's also why I like to keep it as quite big, heavy blocks of shading. Um, I've seen people do ones that are a little bit more towards painted, where they have a lot of gradients and pull the colour around quite a lot. And you don't get the same sort of contrast with that kind of look but if, if you keep it to something a bit more like this not necessarily cell shaded there are ones that still look great with little gradients and things but if you try and get too textury with them once they're shrunk down it it really doesn't read as well they, they look great bigger but they don't work as emotes as well okay so we've got a little bit of the hair down what do we want to do next let's get a little bit of that blue on the shirt and let's grab that gray for on the eyes. So we'll go and put that shadow onto the shirt in that blue. Bring it around the back. Let's have a little bit lit up by there and then more shadow there. And underneath that top bit there. Pull maybe a little bit more around over onto that side. And then that bit of shadow for on the eyes. And I'm gonna put a little bit just in the mouth as well. Um, with some of the ones I used to do, I wouldn't leave the shadow quite as heavy on the eyes. I'd maybe lighten it up quite a few notches so it's like this. Because again, when you zoom out, it's going to make the eyes read as a whole better than it would when they're darker like that. Um, 
what I've also done in the past is left it unshaded on the eyes so I, I just do it like that and then that leaves you with a lot more contrast between the rest of the face any kind of shadows you'd get like that on the eyes so I think I think that can work as well it kind of depends what it is you want to go with for them and like I say you can always render them a few times and go and test them out on that little website that I showed you guys so it's very helpful I'm going to be going with this on mine for the moment and then again you can see now, all, all, all the colours are basically the same. All the colours are basically the same. I just don't have those little highlights on the hair yet. But the thing that's really going to make it pop is all this nice red in the lines. So let's go and put that on and see how that improves it. Did I put it around the side of the face? No, I didn't. It's mostly just around here, around the ear there. I quite like doing it on the inside of ears. I think it makes them pop out a little bit more, especially if you like to put a lot of shadow on ears, on things that are quite line heavy like this or quite shadow heavy. I think it just breaks it up a little bit since we're on the line layer already as well. I'll go and do the eyes by just going and putting in this green and then we'll select the lighter one Go and put a little bit more colour into there. And then, like I did with the last one, I'll just go over, get my white, and put my highlights in. As well as, let's put some on the, on the hair as well. Yeah, let's bring it a little bit more towards that colour. And just put a few of those on. So it's got a bit more shape. I think it'd look nice also to go and change the blue on this. That must be something I forgot to do when I was finishing my own ones up. But let's go and calm that blue down a little bit since it's quite dark around there. See how that looks. And then I might go and edit it into the ones that I've already done. It's just going to give me a little bit softer of a shadow around there. And... We swap between them. You can see again it's not quite as tidy as the first one that I did because I'm doing it a little bit quicker for you guys but you can see how they start to come together from something that's you know a, li a little bit kind of dull looking like this with just the one colour because this colour here and this colour here are the same but because we've got this nice warm one next to it here it looks a lot more vibrant and also because we've got this nice red kind of kicking up the saturation and now we've done those, let's have a move on to this and you guys should be able to start to see now exactly what all of this is comprised of and how it's been put together. So let's go through the process again. It's kind of looking a bit like ass right now, but let's go and start putting our colours on and that will help to bring it out a bit more. With this one, I'm trying to make it very, very curvy. You can see why I want that big lot of contrast around it so that I can get some really nice shadows to show off the shape quite a lot around here like this because again like I said if I made the shading very very heavy over most of this then it wouldn't really give the same shape that you can probably tell that I'm trying to go for in <laughs> this one get around there Bit around these sides. Bit there, around the chin. Put that way down there. Boop, boop. I haven't put the hair in yet on this one either, so let's put that in quickly as the base colour. And then go and grab the darker one again. Let's go and bring into that side and a little bit over here and then we have the same colors that we want to bring into the eyes and it is useful with these to maybe if you're doing a big set go through doing one first so that you have the complete set of colors if you're going to be using it on multiple ones and it's going to be a lot easier to go and make any edits to the color because it can be quite difficult trying to calculate which one's going to work well together and like like I've been mentioning, try and get a nice combination so that they 
kind of boost each other when they sit next to each other. Uh, it's going to be a lot easier if you just try one out than going and putting all of your base colours down first and then all of your shadows and hoping that they work. So if you just do the one at first and edit it until you like the colours and then go and apply it to all the other ones if you're going to be using the same kind of colours on them, it might save you a little bit of hassle in that department. Okay, we're on the same kind of colours and we're going to do the same thing again with all the fleshy tones like this. We're going to try and keep it away from the outline right around the edge and just going to do anything inside that silhouette. It needs a little bit of softening down like this. Fill in the chops as well and I think what I did was go and select one of the more pink colours that I already had in there somewhere. Let's go and paint a bit of a tongue into there. And then, lastly again, the eye colours into this layer of the line art. Like this, with the little bit of colour in them there. And then the layer on the top with a bit of shine on them as well, like that. With the way I've set this out, you might have noticed earlier when I was doing the lines for this one where it was sped up a bit, that I made all this text down the side part of the line art layer, and it's just white at the moment, but it's on the same layer as all of that that I've just coloured in. And what I wanted to do with this was make it quite saturated, but also give it a little bit of, a little bit of kind of jello-y, jello, jello-y, jelly, jelly-ish depth to it. So I want something that's very bright. It's got to be this kind of green. It just, it just has to be. That's, that's my kind of jimmy jam. So I'm going to make it entirely that kind of green but that looks a little bit flat and not that interesting so what I thought I'd do would just give it a little bit more in the same way that I went and picked these colours for the face there's this one that's very light and pastel and I've got one that's darker and a bit more saturated just to put in like that let's give it a bit more depth so it looks as though I guess, I guess kind of jello where it's, yeah, like thicker in the middle and more saturated and darker and more colourful. And because it's a bit more transparent around the edges, it's lighter. So that's the kind of look I was going for by doing that. And then I also went and put a little bit of light just to make it shiny around the edges for that extra little bit of contrast like that as well on top of everything else. Let's go and do this last one. Just turn that other version on and off again. You can see we've already got the flats down. But we want to start going in, putting our shading in like this. Pull it down this way around here. Trying to keep it so we've got, I guess, kind of a front on light source usually helps. And then you just get these little bits of shadows around the edges. That, that's something I try and keep quite a lot of the time with more chibi stuff just so that it's lit up a bit more. Or especially like I say when it's something like an icon that needs to read when it's shrunken down to a smaller size. You need a little bit of shading to show the shape off and show the form but you also don't want to make it like way, way too dark, a bit under the chin, under that bit of chin, or under, under all of the chins, get some weight under those chins, <laughs> at the side, we don't need a whole lot on there, that's going to give us some nice contrast though with that shadow since the hair's a bit darker anyway, get the colour in for those teeth, and the shadows draw around them as well, like that, 
and then also this bright pink for on the tongue. If we start going over into our lines layer, since everything's kind of lines, I should be putting the kind of base red colours down first actually. Do that first, same way that I've done the other ones. I'm going to leave it off of the eyes or the eyelashes just so they stay a little bit darker and draw a bit more attention because that's where a lot of the expression's going to be in the eyes. Uh, especially if you're doing kind of chibi, chibi-ish squashed proportions and things as well that, that fit a little bit better into emotes. You're probably going to have the eyes a little bit bigger so that they read better anyway. And then go and do our lettering as well. About filling it in. Put in darker bits like this. Oop. Oop. Yeah, there we go. It's not it's not quite as finished. It's not quite as finished as the other one. We should go and put those little highlights in as well. On the top of the hair. Let's let's go and do that. There we go. <laughs> little shiny highlights. And now, if I zoom out, you can see what they look like small. You can see that that one, that one, that one, that one are all done. Okay, so I'm going to shrink this one down to 112 by 112. And there's something I want to point out. Because I've shrunk this down as a layered version, it's not very obvious on this one because it's quite clean since it's the cleaner version that I've done. But you might be able to see, or especially around this ear, there's a little bit where it's just a tad lighter. If I take the lines off, you can see underneath all of these lines is where I had this base colour down before I went and used the fill tool where it didn't go underneath any of the lines. And now that I'm shrinking it down and it's anti-alias in it, like this around here, to account for that shrinkage, then it's starting to just leak out a little bit from under those lines and it doesn't look too bad here, but what it can do is affect it quite a lot. For for example, sometimes, I guess where it goes a little bit by here, it can start to like just, just change the edges of things like that if it leaks over too much. Or since this is the biggest size of emote, if you were to do it smaller, you're going to start ending up with little crispy bits around the edge like that, just because you've still got it in a layered format, which is not what we want. It's going to affect the way that the anti-aliasing of the lines also looks. So it's probably going to kill off a lot of the colour in those as well, where it starts to get a little bit more transparent on those pixels. So we don't want anything that goes all crispy around edges like that, like it's starting to do around the ear by there. That's really not something we want. So the way we get around that is to leave it at the full size at first. If I just undo all of this that I've done. So I've got this one just at the full size of 800 by 800 as I've drawn it now. I know I don't have any issues with anything being crispy and I won't when it flattens down because it won't be retaining the layers so it won't know about any of that crispiness underneath the lines. So I'm going to take off my squares underneath and I'm also going to take off this background and I'm going to save it as a PNG. Okay, so I've gone and saved this as a PNG and now it's just, just the one layer for it. So if we go and change the image resolution of it now that it's flat. Let's bring it down to 112. So we've got the largest size. Reduce down, and now you're able to see it's a little bit nicer and cleaner and closer to the larger version. Let's have it the full size there, and let's go and redo it again as well. Let's try it at the 56. Second one down. There we go. Looking good. Looking a lot better. We don't have any like awkward crispy edges. 
on this one as well when I saved it I have also decided to take the edge off that's not me just getting rid of it for any random reason I decided to get rid of it in between let's go and do it one last time with the smallest size 28 there we go and there we go see how there you look just a whole bunch cleaner now so yeah there we go we're done now all you guys need to do is go and drag them into a file and start resizing them and saving them so that they are ready to use hey guys thanks for watching i hope this helped if it did give us a like share if you think it'll help someone else and subscribe for new videos on either fridays or saturdays i'm thinking of changing up my schedule a little bit there'll be links down in the description to everywhere that i post stuff as well as where you can get prints of things that i've already drawn and my commission information if you'd like me to make you some of these there'll also be a link down there to the discord group that i've got if you want to come and chat out stuff with us and also be able to use these emotes lastly i'll put a few links to some similar videos where i'm doing emotes and stuff and some other tutorials including the one I mentioned at the start. Uh, yeah, th th thanks for watching, guys. B bye bye.